And so number 14 then from the 2016 Advanced Tire Mathematics of Mechanics. Here we go. Situations with a block sliding down a plane or rather just being held at the point of sliding down a plane by these two different situations. The first one by holding it with a force parallel to the plane and the second one by holding a force which is horizontal. And you have to show this result here, that there's this connection between this force and that force. Now, the first thing about this is, in these two different situations, there's only one thing, or rather two things, which are the same, and that is, well, apart from the angle, the weight is the same in them both. So that can be used as a comparison, but you can see that over there. The only other thing that's the same in them both is that the coefficient of friction is the same in both situations. What's different would be the normal reactions and the actual force of friction. Because in this one, with a component of Q pressing the shape down onto the block, onto the slope, then this normal reaction is actually going to be greater than that one, and so on. So when you put in the other forces, when you put in the normal reaction, and the force of friction, remember it's want to slide down. Those won't be the same as the normal reaction here. So I'll have to call that something like N1 and N2. And the force of friction here, they'll be different. But apart from that, it'll just be a case of get equations for this one, hopefully not mentioning F and N. Equations for this one, hopefully not mentioning F and N. And then put them together to get this. So the two situations. So there's number one and number two. So let's take situation one. First of all, you know that the forces, the sum of the forces along the plane would be this. You've got P, plus you've got F, I'll call it F1, plus you've got a portion of the weight. Remember that angle there is going to be theta. So the part of the weight that's acting downwards is going to be this. Opposite angle is sine theta, so minus W sine theta should equal zero. Some of the forces perpendicular to the plane. Well, there's only the two of them. There's just N, if I take it upwards. You've got N1, and of course W is acting against that, minus W, and the portion of it acting down is adjacent to the angle, so that'll be cos theta equals zero. Now, you don't want F and N, so you want to eliminate them completely from this somehow. But you know the connection is that F 1 equals N1 is mu times N1. So you can rewrite the first one as mu N1 equals, taking things across, W sine theta minus P. The second one, N1 equals, taking that across, W cos theta. I'll take those as my two equations. And then if you divide them, 1 divided by 2 then you've got mu equals W sine theta minus P over W cos theta. Now, that's handy because I've got rid of F and N. And one thing that I can compare the two of these situations with is they've both got the same coefficient of friction. So if I get an expression for this one in terms of the coefficient of friction, and I do the same with this one, I can then pair them together. So, situation two then, what's happening here? Same thing. What about the forces? A bit squinty there, parallel to it. Well, this time, well, this angle is still theta, but taking that parallel and perpendicular to the plane, that'll be theta there from those alternate angles. So, parallel to the plane, you've got Q and it's next to the theta, so that's Q cos theta plus the F2, but W is acting against it, and that's opposite theta, so that's a sine, minus W sine theta equals zero. Same again, the force is perpendicular. Well, acting up the way, you've got N2. The other ones are acting against it. So the Q, opposite that, will be sine theta, will be minus Q sine theta, same with the W, the part acting down is next to that's cos minus W cos theta equals zero. And then, same as this situation here, I don't want F and N, there's no point trying to compare them with that F and N, 
But what can be compared is the coefficient. So if I rewrite this in terms of F2 would be mu N2, take everything else over. So I've got W sine theta minus W, I mean Q cos theta. That one just says N2 equals, and they both go across as positives, which where I'm going to put it, it doesn't matter just now. Q sine, oops, I already wrote that I, sine theta plus W cos theta. So there again, we've got equations, maybe I should give them different names, call that three and four. And then if you do three divided by four, you'll have mu equals the top divided by the bottom. W sine theta minus Q cos theta over Q sine theta plus W cos theta. Now, everything you've got is just made up of P's and Q's and W's and Thetas. P's and Q's and W's and Thetas. So, equating the two of these. Maybe I'll give them names again. I've used 3, 4, so if I call that 5 and I call that 6, and I'll say 5 equaling 6 means that W sine theta minus P over W cos theta equals this. So I'll have taking this across and multiplying the top W times this, I'll have W Q sine squared theta minus, I mean plus, W squared sine theta cos theta. That's just this multiplying that part. Then it'll be minus P times, and I'll just put it in a bracket, Q sine theta plus W cos theta, because I just want P in its own equals, taking that across, W squared sine theta cos theta, and then here I've got minus WQ cos squared theta. Now, these two go, when I start switching it about, now I'm going to take this over here and that over there, but write it the other way around. So, switching it back to front, I've got P times Q sine theta plus W cos theta is equal to, and all you're left with is WQ sine squared theta, and that bringing, up, bringing over would be plus WQ cos squared theta, and of course taking that out would leave sine squared plus cos squared, which would be 1. So that side is equal to, maybe I should change it around to the correct alphabetical order, QW, we know it, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. And then the final step is take that across, and there you go. I have actually got room to do it. P equals, so I'll have to write it, tutti. And there it is. Now the marking went, actually there was a mark for these two resolutions here. So these two parts. But it seems like the horizontal one, since it's sort of a replication, only got the one mark. And then rearrange them in terms of mu was another mark. So there's four so far. Then equating them, apart it was a mark. And then there was two more for the rearrangements. Not for the final answer though. So it was more or less one for this line, one for that line, one for this line, one for that line. And then it was seven marks.